Welcome everyone to this week's Force Friday. Uh, today we are going to talk about how to draw accurately and yet at the same time, while drawing accurately, um, have the ability to hold on to force and fluidity and rhythm and all the stuff that we all love about force drawing. So um, before we do so, I'm going to introduce us to our, um, I'm going to introduce you to our two other force instructors. Um, let's get this in gallery. How's it going, guys? How's it going, Swenley? Yeah, good. Excited again for another great session. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. We get to draw quite a bit today, so that'll be, that'll be good. <laughs> Here, how's it going, Martin Jay? It's going good. Like, getting bald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm curious now. We'll see how long it takes for your hair to grow back. So, do you keep shaving it, or you just keep it, or does you allow it to grow back now? Yeah, we have to shave it two times. So, I had like one shave yesterday. So, cut down again. <laughs> right. Gonna grow it back right. soon. Yeah, it'll grow back fast. You know, <laughs> that's for sure. I'm wearing a baseball cap for the first time. My hair is a mess. So I'm wearing my Skywalker Ranch today. <laughs> that was a huge moment in my life. A place like that was always dying to get to. And a friend of mine finally invited me to, uh, to where all the Star Wars dreams were created. Very exciting day. So with all that aside, um, let's get over to Photoshop, everyone. And let me open up my browser here so I can see what you guys are saying on the chat. So um, like I said, today we're going to talk about how do we stay... Um, how do we keep force going and yet draw accurately at the same time? Uh, and we're gonna, and I'm gonna open this up to the audience as well. We're gonna talk about um, two uh, very clear, distinct methods to drawing, and you know how do they how do they work, right? And then I'm gonna open up this conversation. Swanley's gonna draw first, then Mutenje, and then I'll I'll take up the uh, take up the rear. Uh, let's see. Um, so let me go to Photoshop. I, I grabbed this image uh, quickly just because this is something I posted on uh, Instagram probably about two weeks ago. Uh, and this is, this is kind of representative of what we're going to show today um, is how do we get to this place? And this isn't, you know, this is a very fast drawing. This probably took like a minute and a half or two minutes or so. Um, but what we're gonna show you today, you know, you could work on a drawing for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, an hour if you wanted to but it's all about a certain kind of process, right? So here's what I wanna discuss. I wanna talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages between hard, what I'm calling hard touch and soft touch, right? So let me describe them and then let's open it up to the other instructors and to you guys in the audience as to what we think are the advantages and disadvantages and I'll try to type some of this stuff up in the conversation. So hard touch is basically more immediate right, that you draw your line, you know, with one shot, if possible, right, each line is one shot to one shot to one shot. Uh, you usually might do this with something like, um, like even a marker or a pen. Um, I have students do this at some point during their education with me, especially um, in a classroom. I'll usually even bring in like 20 or 30 um, Tombow uh, brush markers right, to kind of force students into the space of drawing with what I call hard touch, which is like, again, one shot, you know, try to get it right, put all your thinking in that one line and move from place to place through the body. Soft touch is the opposite. Soft touch is you give yourself time to, um, to think, right, to find answers, right, and uh, build up the experience, right, from white, to very, very light gray, let's say lines to your mediums and to your darks, right? So they each have advantages and disadvantages. I've kind of subtly mentioned a couple of things in there myself, but I'd like to hear from you guys. And first of all, do you find that you do draw one way more than another? Are you someone who draws with immediate line? Are you someone who already automatically draws with soft touch? And what do you think of those two processes? Do you like one more over the other? Are there things that you find you enjoy in one over the other? Is there something you'd like to learn about one more than the other? So we can kind of open up to, um, to conversation, right? 
So let's see, I'm gonna go back over here. I have the same, let's see, what have we got going? Somebody else shaved their head. I love methods. Uh, good day, sir, hello. I have the same conversation about the subject with my girlfriend. I don't know, Jasper, if you're talking about hair or <laughs> or if you're talking about the uh, soft touch approach and hard touch approach. But yeah, what do you guys make of that, right? Do you know, are you normally someone who picks up the marker or are you someone who picks up like the cold erase pencil and like takes your time, you know, creating the drawing before you get to finality, right? Like what space do you normally work in and does it work for you or not, you know? right i'm starting to get used to it so while um you guys are talking out there i guess my question is for um also for swenley and Ratunje. what do you guys think do you guys find that you land in one place more than another i think it really depends upon you know like some factors and one of them is mood <laughs> so mm. if my mood is like yeah it's just like it also depends upon the post sometimes so maybe the pose is more like ballet like or it's like more poetic side of things so i would like to flow around right and if i want to be more shapey or you know, kind of shapey i want to like chop chop things up so i might uh, like pick up a marker and just like go with like one shot and everything so i think it's really based upon the ideas that you are thinking so it really depends upon that so your mind is in like in a different space every time you like change your approach yeah yeah that's, that's what happens with me yeah. yeah that makes total sense i i would piggyback on that with um and this is one of the things we're going to discover today i think i do it based on how much i need to help myself or not if it was up to me maybe everything would be done in one shot in one line but if something has a lot of applied force i like using soft touch because I have time to like, it's like building up a fireball of energy and I want to feel it. Um, if something's more difficult or there's a lot of perspective and anatomy, I might use soft touch more, right? Because I need to like see the three-dimensional space on the page and be aware of the full volume before I go in there and like, you know, just hammer it down, right? So thinking I would add uh, the difficulty. This yeah. is not what we haven't talked about yet is is an advantage or disadvantage. So this is more of like how we use it, All right? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna push this down here and let's see if we can find advantages or disadvantages though too. I think I saw some notes starting to show up here. Yeah, all right, we got some writing going, great. Devin says, I used to use ghost lines lots before I started using soft touch. I find I draw more slowly now with soft touch, yep. Um, I get that hard touch is supposed to build confidence, but I think soft touch is better for that. Soft touch can be lighter, but at least you can build up the line. I often move between both. Still not found which one works best for me. Depends on the day. When I'm doing storyboard thumbnails, I do the hard touch for speed purpose. Okay, so that's a good one. We could say that um, hard equals um, faster uh, completion, right? Uh, that's a good. That's a good note. All right, let's see what else have we got. Uh, let's see, I used to da 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 da. When I'm doing storyboard, I'm, right, with digital, it is uh, it is somewhat in the middle. Cold erase pencils are my favorite, though I don't actually erase all that much. Um, like using a pen versus hard lead pencil. Oh, you like using a pen, I see, right, versus a hard lead pencil. I've had a hard time finding force rhythm, so soft touch works for me. All right, so maybe we could say, maybe soft, uh, SLFT, uh, better for discovering, discovering rhythms, R-H-Y-T-H-M-S. Yes, after 25 years, I always spell out the word rhythm. <laughs> it's so weird and I can just not do it automatically. Um, I have a hard time. Yeah, I really do like soft touch, but often would gravitate towards hard, trying to get an idea down quickly, but often you can obscure things. Yes, so that is that is a detriment to hard. That's a very good call out. So hard, I find um, it gets uh, dark, right, too fast. So less, um, there's less fixing, right? There's less opportunity to fix. 
Yeah, things get dark really quick and it's like game over, right? Very good one. All right, welcome, Jonathan. Uh, let's see. By the way, guys, whatever the touch, do not forget to click the like button. Thank you, Beatrice. <laughs> yes, hit those likes. We break 200, we have another prize. By the way, on prizes, no one has found um, Albert yet. He's still out in the wild riding a unicorn somewhere out in the woods. Um, we decided to give you guys a hint or a clue today. Um, Albert, it is in a video when Diego was still with us. So it's not in the last whatever, 15 or 20, where we've been launching for this new year, right? Uh, so you got to go back. And it's not, he's probably not in like the first five videos either. I don't think it was that early on. So that, that narrows down. I've cut off a bunch from the front and I've cut off a, quite a huge chunk off the back for you guys. So we've narrowed down the scope, okay? So hopefully that'll help. And if you find it, you can find me time code. Again, it's a force bundle, okay? That's a $450 value, lifetime access to force form, force shape, and force anatomy, right? So pretty big. Um, all right, back to the writing, let's see. I found out that using a hard touch is pushing me to draw more confidently, to dare more, if it makes sense. Yeah, so that could happen. We could say that hard um, could help with confidence. Um, we could also say that soft could lead to confidence. I would, I would, I'm gonna play devil's advocate on that one. Uh, I think both of them actually do that job, believe it or not. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Joe says, I've been practicing soft touch, but also ghosting my line so I can make fewer strokes. I have a hard time making too many lines while I'm finding the basic shapes and rhythms. Yeah, I guess the question is what's too many, right? Joe says, and I'd prefer to reach a point where all my lines feel confident and knowledgeable. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, here is something I just relearned. If I've gone too much, too hard to hard touch and often get thick overworked lines. Here's what you do, rub down a bit and you have a cleaner line after all that. That's true. It's hard to clean up after the hard touch approach. That is true as well. I really like hard touch for very quick gesture drawing. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. So that may be a note that kind of leads to the speed point that we made, right? So hard touch, faster completion, may be good for um, like quick, quick gesture, right? Yeah, so if you're in a, you know, let's say you're doing a 30 second drawing, you probably cannot do too much soft touch. If you got five minutes, you've got time, you know, you have time. I would even dare to say, when is it then the, when's a good time to time yourself and not time yourself, right? Kind of opens up a whole other can of worms, right? Another whole video really, but um, be aware of that, you know, Sometimes it's good to time yourself. Sometimes it's not good to time yourself, right? Each one of them has its own advantages and disadvantages also. Sometimes I use the hard one to summarize the softs. Yes, that's a great, man, that is such a great way of describing it. I love that. Is it Eiley, Eiley Riley, right? Um, yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. The hard touch in a way is like finally the, the summation, the summarizing of all of the work, right, that you've done, right? So if I go back down here, it's kind of what we, uh, we said before. Let's see if I can do this and let's see if I could bring up the text from before. There we go. Determined by mood, post-thinking difficulty. Um, I love the idea of hard our touch um, summarizes a great way of describing it. So let's stop there. I think that that's good. You guys have, you know, we got some good notes going on here. I think that is a great way of looking at today. What I want to share with you, really, most of today's conversation is going to be the advanced touch. That's the thing, the tool, the process or method, approach, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that I believe allows you to draw forceful figures um, and with accuracy, right? That accuracy thing is challenging. And we don't want accuracy to be copying, 
right? We've talked about that in the past. Like what's the difference between studying and copying, right? So we don't want to, uh, we don't want to mix those two up. And I, I really believe like that is a fine line. We're like walking a razor's edge between copying and like drawing and studying because you want the accuracy that you think you're getting out of copying, but there's more to accuracy than copying. It's not just about copying an outline and saying I'm accurate. Like, I want you guys to have more ideas, right? We talked about thoughts. Like, you should have these thoughts that you are trying to convey through the act of drawing that you're seeing and excited about from the reference. So I look at the reference. I got these great ideas I'm really excited about, and I try to illustrate them through line. I use the soft touch approach to start more gently, and I build up over time, and I can kind of like, it's almost like a lump of clay. Right, I've got this rough lump of clay and I'm going to slowly build and build and build. And hierarchically, I'm going to narrow down and narrow down and narrow down until I get to maybe some really good hard touch confident lines. And voila, right? Like there's an amazing drawing and it's full of force. It's got form, it's got shape, it's got anatomy, it's got everything in it. But you have to put a lot of work underneath that. Now, I would say that um, when you're learning how to draw, this is the answer. I, I, I would say 100% with 100% um, clarity that this is the answer to learning how to draw is soft touch. Learning how to draw is not from trying to go with hard touch. I know there's a lot of teachers out there that are like, but that builds up your confidence. Sure, but confidence in what? And just the line, like it takes a lot of thinking to get to good drawing. And I think when you draw softly, you're giving yourself a buffer of time, right? You want to Albert this, right? You want to have time to think and figure this stuff out. If you get dark too fast, like you guys mentioned, you just have mud, right? And then you don't have the chance to actually work inside the drawing. The act of learning is actually thinking about ideas, looking at your reference, looking at your drawing, and then manipulating, right? And fixing and working. The act is to get to finally a good drawing. The only way to get to a good drawing is by doing a lot of drawing. So if you're trying to be shortcutted with confident lines, in a way you're actually robbing yourself from your own learning opportunity, right? The more you draw, the better you're gonna get at it. And you have to solve problems, visual problems on the page or on the screen. And I think soft touch is the way to do that. You go hard and you get, it gets too dark, too fast. You can't see what you're doing. Then you just kind of kind of go over and over and over again. You get dark quick and quick and quick. And you never really get to work within that problem. In fact, you don't get to dig deep enough into the problem either because it gets too dark too fast. So you only get down into the problem deep enough before you got to move on, right? So that's one of the massive advantages to soft touch is this like learning opportunity, this learning curve that you can go through. So I wrote up just a quick list here, some of which I just mentioned. So soft touch and ghosting, by the way, some of you guys were um, making them sound like two different things. To me, they're the same thing. When I say ghosting, it's the same as soft touch. It's just a process with which you are drawing lightly and moving to darkness. You're using lightness to think, to figure things out. I think ironically also soft touch or ghosting really helps me understand like applied force because I can run into a curve over and over again because I'm coming in lightly and I can build up the energy, build up the energy, right? And kind of keep feeling it, feeling it. And the buildup is like me driving through that curve and pressing on the gas more and more and more with every pass that I go through the curve, right? <clears throat> so that helps me really feel it. And quite frankly, you know, I don't have to soft touch or ghost. Like, we, you know, I could do it all more immediately but I like it. I actually enjoy what that experience feels like. It feels forceful to me, you know? So I think with force drawing, it actually works really well. Does it have to be everywhere? No. Does it have to happen for the rest of your drawing career? No. If you're a beginner, you're learning how to draw. I think, man, this is like the secret sauce, you know, like go in there and give yourself time to think and work and build up. And the whole confidence thing, uh, someone had mentioned this earlier. I think actually you get to confidence through soft touch more naturally than anyway. Instead of just saying, I have to put the line down and it's going to make me feel confident, which I think it does, but it can also scare you out of your socks, <laughs> right? It's like, I don't know if that's right, you know, and it's like anxiety driven. And, you know, so you have to get over this hump of confidence. And that way, it's sort of like the tough love approach to getting confidence. And we're trying to come in with the love, love approach to confidence, which is uh, take your time. You know, we're here to support you, take your time, 
you will build up confidence naturally, right? Just naturally through work and effort, you get to confidence. And that's how we just work as people, right? So soft touch. I think the fact that it gives you time, what does that do? It, ele it lets you decide your ideas. Like, what am I trying to find here? Where are the rhythms in this body? You know, how does it flow? Uh, at the bottom there, it says understand structure. I might be like searching for the perspective and form. As I said before, I lean into soft touch more when I want more force in it, or like there's a lot of perspective for shortening. I'll like lean my way down into that space because I open up the clock, right, and slow down time so I can go in there and think, right? I need to solve things. I need to figure out what's going on. And I use my drawing as a vehicle to problem solving, right? It's almost like doing math in your head versus doing math on the piece of paper. I have a tough time doing it in my head. But if you write this stuff down and I diagram it, then I can figure it out, right? So I can visually solve the problem. I'm doing the same thing with drawing, right? It allows you to feel more flow, right? So finding those rhythms and feeling connectivity and actually flowing through the body like this, instead of just like chopping and chopping and chopping, I think soft touch allows you to really more gracefully um, slide in and out of the figure and through and around the figure as well, spatially. Uh, it lets you resolve accuracy, right? So getting to the copying thing, some artists, they just wanna go in with that confident line but because they just have a confident line, they literally are confidently making a copy, right? So you're looking at the image, you're like, that's there, that's there, that's there. Well, great, you made a confident copy, but there was really no thought outside of copying uh, in your drawing. And I want you guys to draw with more thought, more thoughtful drawing than just purely copying confidently. So you can resolve accuracy because you're starting gently, again, going back to the lump of clay, and you can then adjust, right? Because it's light. You can go, ah, the angle's a little off. The apex of the curve is in a slightly different place. You know, I want to push this in. Maybe the shape is wrong and I want to adjust the shape design. You can basically force form and shape things until you feel like it's right. And I already mentioned understanding structure. Do you guys have anything you want to add before we get to drawing? No, I think it was uh, pretty clear and to the point. Okay, return Jay. Um, I think there's like one more thing that you know mm -hmm. that you are telling, and I want to add on top of that is like you're also allowing yourself if you're just like putting hard touch like everywhere, you're also stealing your enjoyment, like freedom, like what you said before. Yeah, freedom. So yeah, freedom. if you're like putting like hard touch everywhere, you are not like feeling that flow enough. It's like just sitting in a roller coaster and like having just like one, like one shot and just like reach the destination like very fast. So if you really want to enjoy it, you just like want to go again and again or the same drive to really feel it. And that's the same with the soft touch. So you can go over that again and again. And this is how you enjoy it. Like that's how you become like more confident, I think. And with the hard touch, you're like really stealing that experience away. So. You kind of brought up two things there, right? I take two things out of that. One is, which is a really big one, and I'm glad you brought it up. I look at my big hand here. It's like, <laughs> I should just like here, like put my sleeve out like this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <Ryan Hall. laughs> yeah, with my monster hand. Um, so the first idea is uh, freedom, right? Super, super, super important. Uh, when I get students to really comprehend this idea of soft touch, you want to draw so gently that you finally feel like you've, breaking, you've broken the shackles of fear and accuracy through just being able to attack the darn page, right? With total liberation, right? That is a huge, huge benefit to, um, to drawing with soft touch, a massive one, a huge psychological one to breaking the boundaries of fear and concern in drawing. Um, and then the second one Murtunjay brought up is, um, I think it's just the enjoyment of like the ride. Yeah, if, if we go and say this is a roller coaster, the speed thing that you get out of hard touch means you're done super fast. So in a, in a hedonistic way, you lose some opportunity to actually get in the zone a little bit more, a little bit longer and really appreciate like, 
how all of this sinewy interactiveness in the body happens. I always end up, I, I've probably mentioned this before, but I always picture myself standing on the edge of a cliff, some days wanting to jump <laughs> off of it, but not today. <laughs> standing off the edge of a cliff and looking at rocks at the edge of an ocean and seeing how the water is all like flowing in between the rocks, you know, and I see that, that flow in the body and I like seeing the water push in and even like pulse through there and push against one rock to another rock and, you know, how that all, how that all works. And I, I want to spend my time in there. I'm not in a rush to get out as Mutunje said, you know, so it's flexible folks, right? Sometimes you're going to have a 30 second pose. You got to get it done. You might be drawing on location, got to get it done. Right. But there's also the enjoyment of all of it. Right. And I think that the enjoyment piece, the longer posing, not longer posing, but longer opportunity to draw soft touch will allow you to draw hard touch more successfully. You know, and I think that's what I'm trying to sell you on here, right? That we're trying to pitch to you guys. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna let um, Swanley take it away. He'll start us off. Like I said, Mutunji will go second and I'll take up the back. So we don't have much time today. We each have about 10 minutes, guys, okay? Yes. Okay, let's get started. Let's get the reference up. Uh, so like we've been talking about, and I think this was brought up last week, you know, that um, you want, first of all, to find ideas that you're excited about when you look at a pose, something that makes you go, hey, I, I want to draw that, you know, and then you use um, all the tools that you learn from, from force drawing to uh, help you express those ideas on uh, on the page. So when I look at this pose, um, I see like this this trusting action in the shoulder. You know, I see this rhythm from his back into into his shoulder, into his arm. You know, I see all the tension in this lifted leg. Kind of like uh, you can see the tendons of the muscle of the the muscles like uh, under this strain. You know, keeping this uh, lower leg hanging in midair. So these are ideas, you know, that makes me go, hey, I want to draw this, you know. So now I'm going to make sure that I um, use everything that I've been taught so far in force drawing to uh, express those ideas on the page. So let me see if I can get an even bigger brush, perhaps. So we can start with a soft touch. I want to start with that like, trusting action of his back. I want to build that up and I can see that here it's straighter, like here's like a, an apex moment. So I want this angle because it's very important for the dynamism of that thrust. I can feel the, like the roundness of the top of his uh, torso here. Here we're coming down. You can see this is like squashing, you know, so I'm wrapping around to show that and also to show the volume going on there. And like Mitunji mentioned before, I'm going over it again and again to make sure that, uh, to experience it, you know, and to check if my drawing is matching the experience or the ideas that I have when I look at the, uh, the model. Now, so this is lifted up. I can feel this like hanging. Also, like hanging on the other side. And there's all this compression you know, taking place here. I can see like his pelvis pressing up against uh, the obliques there at the sides. So I want to prioritize this farther leg just to make sure that he's balanced because this is his balancing leg. Also, I see all the tension that's in this leg. I can see like, his kneecap, it's like popping out. You know, and I can see that force continues down at the front. You know, the, I can feel a lot of applied force here, like pushing out on his shin. You know, and then that brings me down into the heel. And this of course is supporting all the weight. So I can feel again that sense of weight and tension that's going on. I move this up a little bit. 
So I feel the weight here. I can feel like the roundness going over the arc. You see the arc of his foot. And now this is also like squashing against the, uh, the ground plane. Let's see, when I look at it, it feels like this needs to be slightly longer, perhaps. Let's see. I think I want to bring this down just a little bit. Feels more like the length of his leg in the reference. So again, I want these two dark moments where his foot is touching the ground to show all the weight. Okay, so I got that. So force is driving from the back. You can feel how it's driving around his gluteus muscle here. You can see the roundness of his thigh fitting into his pelvis. And this is like thrusting out. Now when I check to see the placement of that knee relative to his torso. Also, as I'm drawing the ideas, I'm I'm checking to see where things are. I check proportions and placement, but that's secondary. That's not my main reason for drawing. So it's going down, you can see a very simple shape for his foot here, at least to start with. And his heel is kind of like rounder here at the back. And I can see the uh, back of the thigh here, the hamstrings are like hanging. Now the force is, of course, at the, at the top. So this curve is much shorter, as you can see in the reference. So one thing I would add to what Swenley is doing, guys, is because um, Swenley is kind of cranking out and he gets to dark pretty fast, right? So there's, I would say it seems like your average is you hit maybe a line two to five times, right? So that's your... Mm -hmm. Your, your window is two to five, let's say. Um, but one thing also that could happen here, because Swanley's so used to drawing shapes, is uh, toning as you go, right? So let's see if I can get my brush, my annotate to actually work here. I'm gonna draw with the fatter brush too. So just be aware of like, when he's drawing, he's using line, but he's thinking about this. Right, his line is making this. That's something that I want to bring an awareness of the invisible that's happening behind the visible. Right, it's like, oh, that's what I'm doing. Mm. You know, he's right. Is that fair to say that you're drawing that? Right. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Like uh, I'm always thinking about the forces first, and once I know where the force curve is, you know, I can complete that shape. You know, to create a force shape, indeed. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're line artists um, and some painters, they literally go right for the shape. Like Swanley could have done this if we were painting and said, Hey, I, I want to get the shape of the torso. You know, if I had a fatter brush, I could do this more quickly. I'm almost creating with line. Right. But look, it's like, there's the shape I'm trying to create and seeing that. And I think that's Swanley's kind of superpower is he sees in this world, a lot right and that also man you'll notice just how accurate his positive negative shapes are like they are pretty damn close all right it's pretty damn accurate the space between the calf and the thigh right and so on right yes yes thank you for that addition indeed mm -hmm. so yeah talking about ideas you know this is one of the ideas that i had when i lo looked at the drawing like i want to draw all this all this tension in the muscle, you know, as this lower leg is hanging from it. So I'm using a bit of surface lines here to show like the, the bulkiness 
of the muscle and then I want to draw like these tendons as there are under a lot of tension. Same here. Let's go to the other leg. So here I can see like the roundness around that kneecap. You can see the roundness of the bone at the inner knee. This will be the sartorius muscle. And this inner thigh is relatively straight compared to here. I can see his calf. And it's pretty stretched and relaxed. Like most of the tension is at the front. Hey, Swenley. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. I mm -hmm. want to try something with you. Um, I want to try and see you do this whole pose again, but mm -hmm. do it in and do it in one minute. With soft touch? Yeah, whatever. You just let's see you do, let's see what you do in a minute's worth of time. All right. Because you're so mm -hmm. good at nailing down the darn accuracy of this pretty quickly. So I'm gonna actually mm -hmm. time you. All right. Okay. So you tell me when you're ready. I just want you to crank out this drawing. All right. I'll I'll just hit the clock when you start drawing. Okay. Okay, it's good. There he goes. So we're starting. One minute. So hopefully all of you notice, again, two, three strokes per idea, but look how clear and like powerful they are. They're not one stroke. It's usually always like two or three. So like I was saying before, his kind of general moment is two or three shots to kind of get not only the feel of it, I would say, but to, you know, land it, get a feel for it, right? And then move on. You still got about 20 seconds, 15 seconds left, right? Eight seconds left. Okay, time. So that was pretty good. I wanted to see what would happen with you being under a window of less time. You actually, in a way, Hey, I have to say your drawing got actually more forceful because you got more aggressive, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? Um, and it showed that your, like I said, your fallback is probably two or three shots. Do you know, uh, I'm kind of like uh, picking at your brain here. Do you know why that happens? Do you, do you feel yourself hitting a moment two or three times? You Are you aware you're doing that? And if so, what, what are you getting out of it? Um, yeah, it depends. Like, in areas where I feel more applied force, I go over it a couple of times, you know, more times to build up the dark of the stroke. And areas that are not that like important to me at that moment, I do in fewer strokes, you know, so there is a contrast. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. That's, that's actually all the time we have for it, but thank you. So that was cool. Thank you for being up for the little challenge too. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I love, yeah, I really love both of the drawings and I love seeing, you know, you had more time in the other one, you had more accuracy going, but you also had, I think, more spontaneity, of course, and energy going on the, in the short one, you know, mm -hmm. can you put, can you put them side by side real quick before we leave? Sure. Let's see. Uh, this is the first one. Yeah, so it's cool. You can you can see the foundation is actually still there no matter what, right? You got it in your one minute and you had it also in your other one. Maybe, if anything, the benefit of the short time with the little soft touch you were drawing um, got you the whole pose, right? Mm -hmm. Where before you didn't get to the head or the arms yet, right? Because you were taking more time and the information of the, uh, the lower body, you know? So that's kind of maybe an interesting thing to think about for all of you, you know, like, man, how much do I go into the information of, of the whole thing before I nail down all the other stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it depends. It depends on how much time I have, you know, like if I, if I know I'm going to work on it for 10 minutes, you know, I take my time. Right. right you know? So right. why, why rush it, you know? And it also depends on experience. Like, you know, at the beginning, you probably will 
try to get the old post down in, in like as fast as possible. But as you become more confident in your skills, I think it's easy. You know that you can get the to the end results. You know, it's like when you're drawing more with shapes and designing, you know, it's it's slower and you you kind of have like the big picture in your mind already and you can uh, build slowly towards that. Right, cool. All right, thank you, Swinley. All right, you're up, Mertunje. All right. <clears throat> Share screen. And there we go with our roller coaster ride. <laughs> yeah, our technical ride. Yep. So this is our first pose that I will go for. Um, so let's, so you want to like, uh, you want me to like draw fast or like, I'm just do your thing. Let's see what you do first. I'll see if I, mm -hmm. if I need to, uh, if I need to push it in any way. Cool. So <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you like what I've been thinking, like when I'm like soft touching things, like how do I think? Mm -hmm. So you usually don't see see me, but you don't see like a cursor on the iPad right now. <laughs> Sorry for that. So I'm just like revving up. It's like my warm up with my hands. So I'm not like, I'm just like maybe touching the surface with my palms here, like the side of my palm, but I'm just like revving up, revving up. It's like my warm up first of all, and just like hitting with this like soft touch, you know? And you see like what I'm doing here is I am building it up, building it up like layer by layer. So soft touch is, uh, is like, it's not a line, I would say. It's, it's more like a ghosting, like again, like the ghosting word I wanna bring in. So it doesn't look like a line, right? If I wanna say like what a line looks like, like this is how a line looks right, right? So see, you can see the difference there, right? So that is the thing that's allowing me to like think, right? Allowing anyone to think who's using soft touch here. Uh, so <laughs> I think I choose the wrong template there. It doesn't work that way. So let's, let's get it again. So see here, like how he's like pushing up, see like on the back and I'm like really feeling that out. Also, one of the things is soft touch allows you to connect things, right? Uh, imagine I have like an, uh, ink brush here, so I can show you with that. Mm, where's the ink brush? Oh, here's the ink brush. Uh, there we go. Yeah, like these are the ink brushes. And see if like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, these are like the like the dark, dark ink brushes. So see if I do it like this, you know. These are not allowing me to like connect very well, you know. It's not like, yeah, it's like mm, those lines are like pretty big and they're super, super dark, you know? So what the soft touch is uh, allowing me to do here is like to think and like to connect, right? Oh, this force is like really hitting up there, right? Something more like this. Um, all right. <clears throat> I'm exaggerating it a little bit right now. So this is again, you know, to show it's like, it builds up your confidence. It's not like, okay, you're build, doing it again and again. So it's not building up your confidence there. It really does, right? So, this exaggeration is the proof of this. You know? It's also a proof of experience, I guess. You know, see, like I really want to feel this, like this bag, like hit, like pushing this side and then like going across, across the abdomen. Mm -hmm. Let's get the hands, hands going, All right, like that. See what I've been doing, you know, I'm just like really feeling up, I'm not worrying about the accuracy right now, like, okay, like the negative shapes and everything. Uh, it's, it's more like, I just like want to enjoy it more, like first, without worrying about accuracy a lot. I don't want to lose my experience. Isn't that we are doing like drawing for <laughs> just to like uh, have the experience and like enjoy it at the end of the day, right? I don't want to like pressure myself up, you know, for something useless like accuracy. I'm not saying like, yeah, I mean, 
it's not useless, but it really depends upon the job that you have, right? So when I'm drawing myself, you know, the accuracy is not really what I'm looking for. It's important, you know, uh, it, accuracy is also important, but again, it really depends upon the job that you're doing, right? So there we're going, you know? So see like how I'm building it off soft touch and keep, keep, I'm just like gluing everything together, right? So say if, uh, if this is a road and someone says, oh, I wanna go from head to the toe, right? There's, uh, show me the path, right? So there's like no broken road in between. So everything's like really glued together. Right, more like this. I always draw large, so <laughs> I keep on like shortening things up, shorten things up. Like more like this. Let's see, so there it goes, you know, your road from like the top of the head, like down to the foot, right? That's like a destination. Here's your home, here's a restaurant that you love. <laughs> so you're like really going down there. So anyway, that's the first figure. Uh, Want to jump me to second one? Yeah, you got time. Right. So here's the second one. Uh, so can we like, can we try something different? I can like do it with the heart touch and see like what's the differences. Sure, sure, go ahead. Uh, yep. And then we can like compare them both. So here's uh, the pencil one. Like the force pencil and now you see like marks are like more immediate okay so i'm like putting more thinking in there uh yep i'm putting like more thinking i really want to be accurate as much as i can in the first or like two tries like okay, more like this mm. So you see here, I'm also like using some form lines because you see like there's, you know, there's this foreshortening in there. And you see like my approach changes now. So I'm also, I'm using this uh, tone of the line. Okay, you see like now what I'm doing is I'm using the tone of the line. You see like the line here are very thick, okay? But they're all black, okay? so approach changes a little bit with the type of type of tool you're using are you using soft touch or are you using hard touch you know with that with that it changes so i can use like very dark lines where i want to like show more force it doesn't matter if i'm using like a hard touch or a soft touch but i think like contrast contrast is important because it brings like a lot of interest. It, it doesn't matter if it's a hard touch or soft touch. To so see if the lines, like every line becomes like a same thickness and tone. Uh, I think it would, yeah, I, I mean, the interest would just go away, you know, like that. So here I am making the head finally, uh, connecting with this. Let's try to like, yeah, something more like that. And now the second hand for the balance, balance of this figure. So see, uh, I can be like a little bit more specific with the heart touch, you know, that's also one of the benefits I think we have, you know, that you can be like more specific and make smaller things here, here and there. So, all right, so I think that that's good, you know, and now we can compare those, compare those both. So let's turn this off and make this smaller. And let's keep it aside here. Let's, yeah, so you see here, <laughs> very two different drawings, you know? It looks like a style change. And people, sometimes they ask me, oh, that's a style change. And, Sometimes, I, and then I was like, you know, what's a style? A style is like 
how you're thinking. That's what we discussed in the last, uh, I think the last Force Friday uh, or right. yeah, I mean in the style one. So this is not a style. This is all about thinking, I guess, right? It's how you think. It's it's your style. I would just add to this for everyone that the way that Mertunje got to the drawing on the right and the ability to do that, the same with Swenley, is through a lot of drawing and a lot of practice. And what I want all of you to be aware of today is I think by you doing more of what's on the left, you get to the right a lot faster. And that, so that's number one. Second point is the drawing on the left can still become the thinking of the drawing on the right or the quote unquote style, right? You could easily just keep working on the drawing on the left and get to final clean lines after you've gone through all that thinking, right? So yep. two things to keep in mind. All right, um, I'm gonna hand it over to Mike. Okay. All right, let's head back to Photoshop here. God, I could, I could probably do three months worth of this conversation, folks, I have to tell you, because um, yeah, I just think it's that important. It's so important to, um, to understand how this all works, right? So, uh, you know, uh, while Swanley and Mertunje were drawing, it made me realize maybe I, there's a couple of other things I want to try to do here. Um, first of all, uh, when I started teaching digitally, maybe about six or seven years ago, uh, I would teach this whole soft touch approach to students in this way. Uh, I would say, and you can see up here, my opacity is 100%. I literally had students go down to let's say 10 or 20%. And I'd say, look, this is really what we're doing. You're starting here, right? Then you're going up to maybe like, uh, I don't know, let's say 30%, right? And you get to smaller, you know, the median darker ideas and maybe you get up to like 60 or 70%. And you've got these, uh, these smaller, darker ideas, you see? So this represents literally like big ideas, medium ideas, and small ideas, right? So the value, the tone, the lightness of it, the lighter it is because we're working on a white background, the less commitment I have to it, the bigger I go, it's big, broad strokes. I've got that lump of clay again, I'm like barely manipulating it. It's like I'm sculpting a head, I barely get a block shape out of it. Medium, I go with a slightly darker line again, it's because it's contrasted to the white background and I'm like creating planes. And then finally the smallest one, I'm like actually creating facial features and nose hair and all that kind of fun stuff, <laughs> right? So you could do this. This I did this for, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, two years online. It just kind of got frustrating to me. I'm, I'm too lazy for this. Like it's frustrating to do this over and over again and have, you could set it up as three brushes. I guess that would like speed it up. Um, I really try to find, I, I wanted to try to find like, is there one brush that can do this? You know, like what's the magic brush over here? So you kind of have, this is a personal thing. Um, you kind of have to find, I think, a space um, of value, meaning how black or white it is. I've kind of found that around 30% works pretty good for me, it works well, you know, this tone. Um, and then at least all I'm playing with then is the scale of the brush. So I keep my finger on the control button and on the alt or option button. Because at 30%, if I hit something a couple of times, it gets dark. And I already do that automatically anyway, right? So you can see I could do that. And if I go big, right, I could draw with soft touch and be uh, less committed. And I can go really big, right? Students are shocked actually when they notice just how big the brush is, right? Because look, this is how lightly I'm drawing, but look how big this brush is, okay? Look at the size difference between what I'm drawing there with that line and what that brush is capable of. Okay, so I'm drawing very gently. That's usually one of the first big epiphanies is like, damn, I didn't realize like how gently you're drawing. The other thing I've been doing recently technically is um, I hate having this giant freaking stencil in my face. So if I hit caps lock, it gets rid of it. So even though the brush is huge, I feel like I'm still drawing just with more of this point, right? Cause I could just see that little cursor. So that helps a lot. The brush is still here, by the way, it's humongous. You see that, All right? So it's huge. So I want you to be aware of what I'm doing in the background, okay? Um, I say, try and find a brush size that is light enough for you to draw big and gently. And yet when you shrink the brush down, you hit an area two, three, four times, it'll get to black 30%, right? You do the math, three times three is nine. So that gets me like 90% if I'm hitting with full pressure, right? I get to black. 
one last technological note, something I've noticed in mentorship is if you're on the Cintiq, I'm on my tablet today because I'm not at my studio. Um, make sure that you set the firmness of the pencil all the way up to hard, right? If it's soft or in the middle, how it normally comes as a preset, it's more sensitive. It makes it more difficult for you to actually draw, believe it or not. So you wanna crank up the, the sensitivity to firm, right? So here I am, right? I've got this, um, I've got this huge brush going and I'm gonna knock this down just because I wanna show you something here at the beginning. I'm gonna go down to 10%. So there I am, 10%. It is like, look, look how light it is, right? There's barely anything there. We can even go to 5%. I'm like, ah, it's a little dark, right? Here, 0, 05, 5%, right? So I could barely see it. That's kind of where I'd like you to start, believe it or not, right? So medium to big size brush, 5%. I could just sit here and make a mess of this. Look, I'm just gonna scribble around. I'm kind of forced scribbling, but I'm scribbling, okay? But I can just scribble my way around here. I'm like, man, that leg's going that way, that's going that way. I am actually following templates, believe it or not, and all this like light madness that, you, who knows, you might not even be able to see on some of your screens because I'm drawing so gently, right? But man, is this fun, <laughs> right? I have no commitment to this. I can just goof off, right? And I want you to psychologically be able to get to this space in your drawing, right? To just be able to sit there and work and work and work. So I'm gonna bump up to 30%, like I said, I normally get to, so you can see it's darker now, right? And I'm gonna make this smaller. And I have at least something there, right? Usually the first big hurdle for students to get over is the whiteness of the page. Like, oh my God, where am I supposed to start, right? So at least I have something, right? I have my initial force scribbling, right? Here, let me... Um, I'm gonna command L this and just darken it just so you could see, let's see if that helps. Uh, it might not even do anything. Uh, no, it's not even adjusting it. I was gonna say, I want you to see that it's actually, th th that it is there, my lines are there. So I'm gonna start pulling stuff out, right? So I'm like, man, I love that shoulder and it's pushing up, right? And it comes in and I've got my skeleton because of before, right? So this is me at medium, I'm not, I'm not, Totally at a perfect line yet. It's not totally black. Um, I'm in the middle zone of, I'm still working. I'm drawing pretty gently. I'm gonna make this bigger. Again, bigger is where bigger ideas happen and I'm just gonna ghost my way in, right? It's almost like the figure is in the fog. You know, I live in the Bay Area right now and lots of fog, right? So it's like you're, you're seeing something make its way out. Right, and I'm starting to pull it out of that fog, right? So here I look at the knee, I wanna get the other knees placement correctly. That's something I have time to do because I'm not drawing with too much commitment, you see, right? So I, I can make that happen. And I, it's okay that I'm sloppy. Force, again, force is not drawing neat.com, right? I used to make a joke out of that because that was like one of the biggest struggles that new students had. It's not drawing neatgap.com, it's drawing force.com. I don't care if you're sloppy. I just don't want little hairy lines. I want long ideas, right? Long ideas of force. This arm is a ton of foreshortening in it, right? So I gotta be really careful here about uh, respecting that. So this comes all the way up and you can see his wrist goes into his face and then his hand does this really beautiful like sloped thing on both sides like that. So I'm just gesturing it out, right? With force and energy. Maybe I want some form in there, right? Just enough, I'm dark enough where I can see, but not dark enough yet where my mess is gonna stop me from putting some more work in there. I'm close to that though, I have to say, this is almost just a little hair dark, right? I can't, I can't mess around too much because I'll get into a place where I can't draw anymore, right? It gets too dark too fast, All right? So there it is, right? I like this like overlapping here. I wanna make sure I get the stepping of this goes forward and then we go back and back and back in space. So here I am, I'm still at my 30%. I'm gonna make the brush smaller and I can start really getting in here, right? I'm like, man, I really like that shoulder, like I said, and his arms hanging down over here. This is roundness in here. And I'm okay now that I'm still doing thinking and building and all this other stuff, but I have to do it with more immediacy and more accuracy now because because my brush is smaller and it's more intense, it's darker. Right, so now I can, I can do that. And I gave myself all this time underneath to think and to work, 
right? To, to understand all of this, right? This is a pretty complex pose and I've given myself the opportunity to solve it, right? To just figure it out. So you can see now I can go in and I'm, I'm pulling the model through the fog again, right? More toward, you know, more out, more opaque. So he comes forward in space. It's kind of a painting idea actually that we're bringing to drawing here to tell you the truth, right? So I'm bringing him forward and I wanna feel the, the forwardness of that, you see? Does it make for a perfectly crisp, clean drawing? No, because man, there's a lot of work and mess in here, but that's okay. You know, I want you all to, to give yourself the right to be messy, it's fine. You know, I, I don't know. I think we all kind of grow up being told to, including me, um, you know, make sure your room is neat, <laughs> right? It's okay. This is art, guys, right? We're here to think and figure things out and feel things out, and discover ideas. So it's all right. It's okay if it's a little messy, right? Learning is a messy process. That, that learning is not a neat process, right? You learn by making a mess. And what I mean by a mess is by failing, scribbling, you know, if you're doing math or you're doing drawing or English, whatever, it's like thinking and writing and scratching things out, trying to solve them, right? So you can see I'm, I'm pretty much at the like end of this before I start going into drawing like facial features and, and stuff like that, right? So I just want you to see just how light you can get to how dark you can get, right? Is any, can you guys support me with uh, anything going on in the, um, in the live chat that I need to uh, address by any chance? Some of us are drawing with us, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What am I doing on time? Okay, so we're at at time. So hopefully that helps. I just want you guys to be aware it's okay to start with barely anything. You know, come in there nice and light, right? And have barely anything going on that you can barely see. It's so enjoyable to draw without any kind of stress or commitment, right? And I want you all to have the opportunity to do that. You know, draw super light, super sloppy. Just try to feel the energy of things. Here I'm at 30, but I'm trying to draw very gently. So you're seeing my line more. But this is where it begins, you know, and then you'll get to like what Matunje or Swenley drew today with more like confident line. You start with all this stuff, you know, start here, be a slob, you know, make a mess of this stuff. And the soft touch allows you to do that. It gives you the freedom to experiment. To this at 30% and at this size, it's getting kind of dark pretty quickly. I don't have as much room to play around, right? Not as much as I did before, you see? So that's what I want to leave you guys with today. You know, make sure you draw with something that is light enough to give you freedom to explore, find the answers, you know, draw form. I might go in there and say, man, I need this going back. I need to get some looping lines going on back here. That could all be done with a much lighter brush before you get in there and you start committing and saying, how do I pull that off without all that structure now? I needed that for me to understand it. Right. It's like, oh, I need to get his pectoralis in there. Maybe I need to make sure his muscle is wrapping. You know, maybe it's about like the angle of his belly button on his stomach. Maybe it's about the clothing and how it sweeps around his body. Right. The crotch shows like the structure that his pelvis is pointing in. Right. Like I find all those things from um, from drawing through soft touch. Right. OK. So, you know, here I am. I'm being more bold about it and fast about it. But that happens, that kind of stuff that we've all shown you today, that happens by allowing yourself to go through this process, okay? All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed uh, today's session. Go have fun drawing, right? And try soft touch, give yourself room to explore. Um, and you know you're doing it right when you cross the bridge into freedom, like Mertunje brought up. I think when you feel like, oh my God, I'm not worried about this anymore, you're in a good place, okay? You want to get to accuracy and all that stuff over time, not through stress, through practice, right? Through practice and learning and massaging and manipulating until you get to where you want to go. All right. All right, everyone, have a great uh, weekend. Thank you, Martin James Swenley, for your demos today. And um, we will see you guys uh, next Friday with another session. Go, uh, go find Albert. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey, bye.